The second thing, we like to tell ourselves we're clean and green. But in truth, it, it's not really quite so simple as that. And some of you may have seen the Prime Minister interviewed by the BBC on Hard Talk a few weeks ago when he was there. And here was this BBC interviewer saying, German rivers are cleaner than New Zealand rivers. Uh, and he produced this evidence by New Zealand researchers talking about the state of our waterways and saying, what's this 100% pure stuff? Nobody believes this in the rest of the world. And they don't. I mean, articles have been written in international newspapers pointing out that we're not 100% pure. We, we use that as a branding, but it's not actually the truth about ourselves. We're a pure number, and we've got a large area of land, and we haven't managed to spoil it too much yet, but we can't really claim that. And I think it's a risk to think of ourselves that way if it's not really true. And one of the, the factors that's really important to understand about the implications for the environment is for the dairy industry. Because as I'll show you in a moment, the dairy industry is really at the heart of what prosperity we do have as a nation. And yet we know we can't grow it. We can't scale that industry up as much as we'd like to because of the limitations on the quality of our water, on, on water supply for the dairy industry, on the effect on our lakes and rivers and so forth. So that's a real problem for us. And it's a challenge that we, we have to face up to. In some ways, we could think of our country as having lived off its resources for, I guess, a thousand years of, of human habitation. Uh, but now we've reached a point where we've got resource limitations. So we have to start thinking in a different way if we want to grow prosperity. Maybe we have to start thinking like Singaporeans or Japanese who have to think about how they grow prosperity without resources. The other thing we, we do in New Zealand that I guess worries me a lot is we kind of have a, an approach to environmentalism which I think is very hypocritical. And I'll just give you an example of this. One of the things we do is we like to criticise other countries for the way they behave. We tell Indonesians they shouldn't chop down their rainforests because, uh, you know, it's bad. They put plant palm trees up there and uh, it's, it's not good for global climate change or whatever. But we kind of forget what we did to our country. Both Māori and European and all other peoples have come here. We've utilised our land to the maximum degree and we, we turned a lot of our landscape into farms. Two-thirds of our native forests we turned into farms. Were we wrong to do that? Well, I, I can't say we were, because I think without creating farming, we'd have had no prosperity at all. And in truth, every country in the world, whether it's the United States or the Europeans or whatever, have used their resources in turn. So I think it's a bit rough for us to say to a country poorer than us, you shouldn't use your resources. When we've got issues in terms of our impact on our environment, when our bird populations are dying out, our forests are silent, we have a loss of species that's really threatening, uh, everything we hold dear in this country about uh, the, the things we love and, uh, about our environment, that we've got a, a problems we need to attend to without telling other people how to live. And I think that's uh, a big challenge for us. Another little concern that we have is about prosperity. And I'm going to make no apology for the fact that I believe prosperity is important. We often say we don't want to be rich like our Australian cousins, you know, they're, they're very rich people, they're gold paid taps and so on. We, we have a nice lifestyle here, we don't want to be so rich as them. But, you know, um, we have issues in terms of our health system. We have issues in terms of roads and infrastructure, which are important. I'm a metastatic cancer sufferer. I go to the oncology ward of the hospital, I have an IV line put in me, I have these drugs poured in, and sometimes they cost a lot of money. Um, one of them cost $50,000. Gosh, the taxpayers paid for that. Uh, there are young people sitting there having drugs. There are women with breast cancer having Herceptin treatments, $100,000 of treatment. Some treatments we can't afford. I, I wanted to get some uh, Avastin, that's Bevacizumab, a monoclonal antibody drug for my cancer. Sorry, Pharma can't afford that, so I bought it myself. Wasn't well, I lucky, you know? Is that equitable if we don't have access to the same uh, uh, health system? This is a drug that's available in Australia for free. It's available in Canada for free, but not here. So we know we just can't afford it all because we have limitations. I think prosperity matters to families. And if anything makes clear to us in New Zealand that prosperity is important, it's what's happened to Christchurch. This is just an astounding event for all of us because we're all going to be paying for this. The effect of the Christchurch earthquakes on our economy, quite apart from the tragic loss of life there, is enormous. It's actually twice to three times the effect of Japan's Sendai earthquake and tsunami on their economy. It's eight times the effect of Hurricane Katrina on the United States' economy. For us, given our size, it's massive. 
And these figures are out of date now. We thought we were up for 15 billion. We're probably up for about 30 billion now since the more recent earthquakes and the re re recent reassessment. And a very high proportion of that is coming from we, the taxpayers, because insurance doesn't cover all of that. It's a big, big hit for us. And it's going to be a major factor in, uh, in our lives as New Zealanders over the next few years. We all share that burden. So I, I just want to make those points because I don't want to apologise for the fact that I believe GDP per capita or gross domestic product, dollars we earn, actually matter to the quality of our lives. We don't have to have gold-plated caps. We could use our wealth, if we had it, to uh, get rid of all the predators off the mainland the islands of New Zealand and restore the birds to our forest. That would be a good thing to do. But you can't do that when you're poor. There are all sorts of worthy things you can do if you've got the prosperity. So that's what this is about. The story of my lifetime is a story of New Zealand and Australia. Because when I was a child, and I must, I must be very old, but I can remember when we felt sorry for Australia. Because they were poorer than us. They were. There was more Australians migrated to New Zealand than vice versa. The Australian dollar was a joke when I was a kid. I mean, nobody would accept it. It was a, it was a weak currency. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It just proves how old I am. But in the, in the last 40 years, things have changed. And now we have this big gap. And that's the gap that's opened up. Uh, where the black line has gone downwards. This is a GDP per capita compared with the average of the OECD countries of 100. And Australia is now 35% richer than we are. And what that means is that if we wanted to have a similar um, per capita GDP as Australia, we'd need to earn another 40 to $45 billion a year. So you just keep that figure in your mind, because it's kind of a useful number to compare with the ways we might actually improve our prosperity. Uh, you know, we have half a million New Zealanders living in Australia. I think it does matter that Australia has got a big gap on us. And I think the government's right to try to have a goal to lift our prosperity to match Australia. I just wish they had a clue how to do it. They don't seem to have any ideas. But I'm not saying I know the answer, but I've got a few thoughts in my own, and I'd like to put those to you today. So 40 billion, remember that figure, 40 billion. Now, here's another interesting story, another little myth we have in New Zealand. Well, at least we have a, we have a great lifestyle here. We don't have to work too hard, it's really nice. Now, you won't see New Zealand on that graph, these graphs, you've got to guess where it is. I'll show you in a moment. But this is a graph, up the vertical axis is how hard you work uh, compared with the OECD average. So you see in Iceland, which is right up at the top of that graph, they're the hardest working people in the OECD. But I, I don't know what they do in Iceland. Now, on, on, on the bottom axis, along the, along the horizontal axis, is how much you make per hour, how much output there is per hour worked. And you see the French, they're way over on the bottom right, so they don't work at all in France, which is great. <laughs> yeah, they're really, they're, they're really, so that's the lifestyle place. But they've got the highest productivity in the world, higher than the United States, higher than everyone. So if you multiply together how many hours you work by how much you make per hour, you get how rich the country is. So the United States still comes out on top. The French aren't far behind. And where are we? That's us. Well, the good news is we don't work as hard as the Icelanders. So there are people who work harder than us. And we think we've got a nice, li easy lifestyle here. Let me tell you, we're the second hardest working country in the OECD. New Zealanders work hard. That's why they get jobs and they go overseas. They're well, edu well educated and they're hard working and people love employing Kiwis, right? So it's a fact. We don't have an easy lifestyle. But look at our productivity at the bottom. Now, Greece, I don't know whether Greece is still ahead of us. They passed us by about two years ago. They're a basket case now. Um, but there are two countries that have got lower productivity than ours, and I haven't put them up there. That's Turkey and Mexico. So at least we beat them. <laughs> That's true. But basically, um, we don't make very much per hour in New Zealand. Is it because we're not well educated? No. Nope. We're as well educated as the French, the Belgians, probably better educated than most Americans. <laughs> no problem. That, why? Well, I, I'm going to say something which is very, very challenging, and uh, I don't want anyone to take offence. We are poor because we choose to be poor.